Wayne Nish opens the menu in New York with a starter that reveals his encyclopedic knowledge of Japanese cookery. Sashimi with chives, olive oil, and an unusual white soy sauce. Michael Taus presents an eclectic main course from Chicago. It features the Polish dumplings called pierogies, which are flavored with carrot juice served with venison. Scott Boswell finishes in New Orleans with the city's signature Bananas Foster. It features French toast, bananas in a brown sugar and banana liqueur syrup topped with ice cream. March Restaurant in New York has, under chef co-owner Wayne Nish, attracted serious media attention. It won a Top Table Award in Gourmet's Reader's Poll, was cited in John Mariani's book on New York restaurants, and won a Golden Dish Award from GQ magazine in 1997. Here is sashimi in olive oil and soy sauce. Um, the dish is being made at March these days with a Japanese flatfish called harami. Harami is uh, very uh, similar to flounder, uh, small fluke, gray sole, lemon sole, Dover sole. But I've done the dish with a lot of other uh, fin fish, such as wild salmon, halibut, and coho salmon a number of different items. You can certainly get the fish filleted from your local fish market, but it's going to be critical to look for what is generally referred to as sashimi quality fish. because you really do want it as fresh as possible. And work with the one filet by grabbing an end of it and sliding my slicing knife underneath it and working back and forth in order to separate the skin completely from it and turn it over and check to see that I haven't left any of the skin or the, or the fat underneath it. Once I've got the filet off and there are no bones here at all, all I'm going to proceed to do is to slice on an angle very thinly. With my slicing knife. And if I get a little too thick, simply turn my blade onto it and flatten it out so that it is tender and we're not spending any time chewing. I'll then take the sliced fish and place it in the serving plate in one thin layer across the bottom. It's not necessary to have slices that are exactly the same size. Just want small pieces that are easily eaten. The garnishes, as I mentioned before, or the success of the dish is the excellence of these garnishes. I'm using a, uh, extra virgin olive oil from the Chianti region of Italy, although I've used other oils over the years. This is a type of soy sauce, a type of Japanese soy sauce uh, called shirodashi. 
I've used regular Japanese soy sauces in the past, and, and a regular Japanese soy sauce, one that you'll be most common with, is made from uh, a, a, a distillation, a fermentation of 80% uh, soybeans and 20% uh, wheat. Shiro shoyu, which means white soy sauce, is made from just the opposite, 80% wheat and 20% uh, soybean. However, in that case, and this type of soy sauce is hundreds of years old, it is very, very delicate in flavor. What is typically done with it in order to bolster that flavor is to add typical dashi ingredients, which are dried fish, dried mushrooms, and dried uh, seaweed. After that is done, and uh, flavors are extracted from it, it's then called shiro dashi. Shiro dashi is not a terribly common ingredient even in Japanese cooking. It is fairly rare even over there. You, it can be gotten here from, uh, from Japanese suppliers and uh, specialty Japanese grocery stores. It has a very delicate flavor and tastes somewhat briny, uh, as you would imagine, from the addition of the dried, of the dried fish. It, it is important that uh, the olive oil go on first so that the soy sauce doesn't stain. And then I'm gonna season with chives. Very finely minced. In an almost pointillist, even cover of it, and then finish with dried sesame seeds, not the toasted ones, because the toasted ones are going to be too, too uh, strongly flavored for this. And then the finished dish is exactly as you see it. Michael Taus, owner chef of Zealous in Chicago, has always been interested in ethnic cuisine. He certainly is in the right city. No town outside of New York offers a broader landscape of unadulterated ethnic food. Consider his entree, grilled venison with fig stuffed carrot pierogies. First, first element we're going to do in this dish, we have some really nice uh, mission figs. These will comprise the filling for the pierogies. We're going to combine a little bit of uh, olive oil. A little bit of balsamic. A little bit of honey. OK, so I'm going to take these, throw them in the oven. They're nice and soft. I've taken the flour, the carrot juice, sour cream in the mixture to make the, the dough. Now we're gonna roll a little bit out and make the pierogies. I've chopped up the figs into a small dice. I'm gonna roll it thin enough, but not too thin, it'll break. Okay, now that you have it rolled out. Cut out little circles. Take a little bit of the fig mixture.
a little bit of egg wash just to seal it up. I'm going to seal it up nice. I'm going to cut it with a little fluted cutter to make it a nice shape. Put that to the side. Okay, I have some uh, venison loin, Servina from uh, one of my purveyors. I'm going to just have a nice little four ounce piece. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of oil so it doesn't stick on the grill, so it roasts up nice. Have just a little salt and pepper. We're gonna give it a nice little grill there. While we're grilling the venison, we're gonna, we're gonna let that go. I have some baby carrots that I've slightly blanched and peeled. Give that a nice turn, we're getting some nice marks on that. Just get a nice little long shape. You know, I have a mission fig a white fig and a brown turkey fig. I'm gonna mix these in just to give us a little color. You can use whatever figs you can find. They're nice and firm and ripe. So we're gonna take a couple of these little pierogies. So they're nice and we're going to let them cook till they're nice and tender and they're floating. The accompanying vegetables start with chanterelle mushrooms. Just add a little bit more oil once them, because the mushrooms are going to absorb the oil. So you just want to have a... Almost there. Nice medium rare. A couple more seconds. Then I'm going to throw in my carrots, give them a little bit of a saute. Okay, I'm taking the venison off. I'm going to let that rest for a few seconds. I have my figs. I just want to get a little bit of uh, caramelization, cook, cook the mushrooms through. Then I'm going to add my figs in. Just to give them a slight saute. I'm going to give it a little bit of... Uh, Salt and pepper. Let it rest. Some beautiful color. Put a little bit of meat there. Pierogi, little mushroom. Just to have a nice little base. We're just going to add one more pierogi right down here on the side. Warm up our sauce. A little salad brunette. We're just going to top off on top a little bit. Put up pierogi. We're just going to take a little bit of the sauce. A red wine veal stock reduction. Restaurant Stella is an up-and-coming destination in New Orleans' French Quarter. Louisianian Scott Boswell is the culinary force behind the menu. As a youngster, he won a blue ribbon in a 4-H cooking contest, a prelude to the CIA, and work in France and Italy. His dessert is pure New Orleans, Bananas Foster. All right, first we're going to make spicy candied walnuts. We have toasted walnuts here. 
have boiling water and smoking hot peanut oil. You've got to be careful. This is really hot. First thing we want to do is take the walnuts, put them in a strainer. I'm going to go into the boiling water for about 30 seconds. Just want to warm the walnuts <clears throat> through and through. So they'll take on the powdered sugar we're going to put them in. Drain off all the excess water. I'm going to go into a towel. You want to dry them, but not overly dry them, just to get the excess. Okay, while well they're still steaming, it's going to go directly into some powdered sugar. And you want to Awesome, and get them coated really well. You be careful. That's it. Let me go right on here. This is a mixture of sugar, kosher salt, cayenne pepper, cinnamon, and nutmeg. You want to dust that on there. This is real hot, so you want to toss it and be careful. Plenty of that seasoning mix on there. You want to let those cool a little bit. They'll get crunchy after they cool. And we're going to make a little French toast batter. Take an egg. Another egg. Some half and half. Some sugar. Some cinnamon. A touch of nutmeg, not too much. You want to whisk this together. This is a French baguette, just a pretty traditional French loaf. Cut it in half. About a quarter inch thick. And you want to put these in here, make sure they soak this up really good. This is clarified and hold butter. Don't really have to drain them, that's all flavor. And we're gonna cook those till they're brown on both sides. Okay, nice and gold on that side. Get the other side nice and golden brown. Okay, now for the foster sauce. Brown sugar. You want to mix that together. Pretty high heat. Cinnamon. Touch of nutmeg. We want to incorporate this so it's all pretty well dissolved. It doesn't matter how it is, it could be any way. Now, a little bit of banana liqueur, a little bit of light rum. And 
took all that out. Finish it off with a little bit of heavy cream. It's nice and smooth. And then we'll add our bananas. The plate starts with vanilla ice cream atop the French toast. You want to get some sauce and bananas. All around. Okay. Take some of our spicy candied walnuts. That. Deep fried plantain slices finish. And we're going to go like this. 